We loved everything about the place. We thought, geez, you know, we don't have to come in and tear things apart. It's already been done. This is not the way to vent a stove. Inspector should have caught this. Absolutely. All he had to do was look up. One simple step. Reach in, look up. Wow, this is done improperly. The home inspector has definitely missed things. I don't know about this house. Dee Dee and Rick bought their dream home in the perfect neighborhood. They did the right thing. They brought in a home inspector. Home inspector gave it two thumbs up. The real estate agent knew the inspector. Hmm. The house was bought. Previously, four months renovated and sold. It's sure starting to look like a flip. Now, what did the home inspector miss? Obviously, a few things, because I'm here. I'm going to have to take a look. I'll find out, but I'll make it right. I grew up in this neighborhood. Uh, I was born and raised just about four blocks north of here, so it had always been kind of a desire of mine to get back into this area, and this was an opportunity for us to get back down this way. Came through for a viewing and just fell in love with it, and he said, oh, there's absolutely nothing I have to do with this house. So some of the selling features that really attracted us to this home uh, was, was the privacy, you know, with the setback from the road. Dee Dee likes to garden. I guess we consider this a four-level side split. It's got lots of nice layers. And we get to do things like play pool together. They had uh, redone the kitchen. So when we came through for the viewing, it was like, oh my god, there's all this space. The kitchen was the selling point. And it was like, just perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. We got a home inspection done through the recommendations of our realtor. We never really actually met the home inspector guy. He just showed up one day, left us a little book, and said, there you go. We started discovering that there were some issues with the home that we felt should have been picked up by the home inspection that wasn't. Well, hello. hello. You must be Rick. I am. Hi. And you must be Dee Dee. I am. Nice Pleasure to meet you. To meet you. So, you know, we have the issues with ventilation over the over the stove, and, and Deidre likes, likes to cook, uh, and that's an issue. For me, we have a gas stove. Nice. You can see why uh, you purchased the house. I kind of like this. That's a great look. Any issues here? Well, the fan doesn't work. I did not read about this in the report. This is not the way to vent. A stove. What they did was they ran duct line. You can easily see it. I don't even need my flashlight for that. It appears to be up through the center here, both points going up. There's no motor, there's no nothing. You don't put it in this method. So this now it's little things that I see, who did the work and how was it covered up, because it looks really good. When we first came into the house to view it, um, you know, we had realized that, you know, it was it was fully furnished. And we thought, geez, it's so someone's living here. Uh, and we found out afterwards that it was just a staged event for the day and uh, that, you know, after we made an offer with it, you know, they said, well, you can, you can buy any of the furniture too. So with gas, yes, we, we really do want the exhaust out. You're using it, but you're not vented. Correct. Right. Yeah, because you have to cook, right? I think they had it four months. They had it four months and then they uh, did all the stuff. All the neighbors kept talking that the guys were great and they kept borrowing the neighbors' tools and whatnot and all these guys are great and I was like, oh. <laughs> When I read the report, what it said about this vent, this hood, was that it was vented directly through the roof. That's all it said. So uh, was there a proper hood above the stove? Yes. How was it vented through the roof? Is this proper? No. There's no hood in here, and this is all a, a supposed custom uh, ventilation unit. But what I'm seeing is, is that there is no fireboard or no stoppage to the small little attic space that is there, and I can clearly see the insulation. No, we don't want that. That's a fiber up there, right? It's fiberglass. And since there's a hole in here that I can stick my camera up, it allows the droppings or the fibers to come in. And even when you're cooking, I think the last thing you actually want is fiberglass in your meal. You know, knowing that was a flip, we thought at least if they're bringing, you know, qualified people in to do the work, and when you look around the home, uh, it looks like there's some quality workmanship going on. 
So there's two problems here. One is possible weight load. This is a solid stone. And that's right on top of the countertop. So if you ever had to pull the countertop, what do you have to do? Take this down. Mm -hmm. It doesn't slide out from underneath it. No. This is not the way to do this. The upstairs shower off the master bedroom, uh, we can't use it right now because it has some water issues that's causing problems uh, in another room in the house. Below this, there's some issues with the ceiling now, and we were suspect that it's coming from this area. There's something going on here. Yeah, well, the problem with this is that water will penetrate grout. Think of concrete as, as it absorbs water. Now, it's only going to stop it for so long before it pulls it in. This should have been a solid piece of uh, marbleite, same as the bottom here. There's a lot of obvious things that the inspector missed. We don't want loose pipes like this. We want the holes filled in behind it, which they're not. You know, if water can blast them, it hits back on the wall, it drips down, it goes on the hole. Where the hell's it leaking from? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten places maybe. Eleven. Look at, look at this. See the grout across the top here? This will never work. This should be a marbleite piece that continues out over the edge so we can caulk underneath it. That's not the way to do that. This is an ABS pipe that comes up through the floor. Could it be leaking from here? The answer is absolutely yes. There is a trap there because I can see water. Problem is, that's not the way you do a drain in the shower floor. Wrong, wrong. Well, when we had the home inspector, when he came over to our house that we were selling, I had asked him, I said, what's the water pressure like? Because I always, I'm, I forgot to do it when we came through the house. And he looked at me and he says, I don't know. He says, I'm not about to get wet. You know, we were hoping that yeah. any issues that may have been involved with the house, the home inspection guy would have picked up. At least we were hoping. Did you even see if there was permits pulled on the house? No. no. I think that we need to up the industry of home inspections and make a phone call. Yeah. And to the best of our knowledge, was there a permit pulled on this house? The listing, it said, Renault, completely renovated, right? Yeah. It's brand new, yeah. brand new electrical, brand new. I'm just curious, yeah. is that what it said? Pretty much. Because yeah. that's normally how they sell houses, yeah. Yeah. right? And while if that's true, where's the proof that it was actually done properly? You know, now we met Mike, I know he's pissed off, but that's just pissed us off now too, because it's, uh, this is something that I think shouldn't happen. So we're just glad he's here. Oh, newly renovated, you're gonna love it. It's bling bling, furniture. These are things that make me go, I don't know about this house. I'm seeing it crack all over your ceiling, both on the back of the house and on the front of the house. We do have cracking within the drywall. It is in the report as standard. It's a new home. This should not be standard. Uh, whether or not they structured it properly, I'll find out. I mean, look at that drywall. You can see, looking up, you can see a crack across here, a crack down here, a crack across there, and it's, you know, it makes you wonder. Did they use any tape when they plastered? One of the things we noticed first off when we, we had just moved in the place is when we were walking up to, there's a, a short flight of stairs going up to the kitchen that's tiled, ceramic tile. They're all loose, every one of them. Well, if you notice in an older house, usually when you walk down the stairs, what do you hear? Creak, 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 yeah. which means we have movement. And if you go and try and put tiles over that, they break, and I mean, it looks good, right? But it doesn't last long, so right. no. it becomes an issue. Now, what do you hear? Hollow. Two hollow. Cents hollow yeah. Now, what that means is it's completely not bonded no longer, and I'm sure every one of them are the every, same. Every time we vacuum, we're vacuuming up more grout. Oh, that's not a surprise. Well, the house inspector told us to just add a little bit of grout, and it'll be fine. Oh, geez, yeah, for sure. And it'll yeah. crack again. I love the French doors. We, uh, we picked up on a, on a water stain mm -hmm. when we first moved in here. This is the bathroom upstairs. That yes. would have been the, the ensuite. I and, know, OK, I, there was nothing in the report. You missed it. I think you told us to paint over it. Yeah, you said paint over it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So we thought, that's, I don't think so, but anyway. It's the little things I'm looking at that tell me they fixed it up, put the house up for sale. We call that fluffers, right? Because mm -hmm. he wanted to dress it up, put the house up for sale, and two beautiful people come in and buy the house. Looks awesome, and it truly does look really good. But 
we have a problem. I'm gonna go through your house, I'm gonna use special tools, and I'm kind of nervous because something tells me I'm gonna find a lot more than I wanted to. It's a shame, this is a lot of nice work that truly looks good. I can see how deceiving it is for the homeowners to come in and say, wow, look at this place. You know, you can walk all the way around this beautiful centerpiece. I already know that we're gonna be opening that up. I kinda really like it, but it's not the right way of doing it. Rather than just tackling and saying, you know what, take this down. We have a lot in here. I saw the thermostat, the fireplace, cable, lighting, switches. So there's a lot in this cavity of the fireplace area. And instead of just like wrecking it all, maybe we go in through the ceiling since I know I'm gonna be doing some repairs and just pop up and take a look and see what's up there. And I'm just seeing if I see any inconsistencies with the insulation up there. And so far, visually, it looks good. I can easily see the skylights. There's a skylight. There's a reflection of myself in the glass. And if this doesn't see through glass, it actually gives you an improper reading on the glass. But it shows how good it works, because it shows my body. And I'm kind of hot, actually. Not really, but you know. All they did was they came in this room, put in some pod lights, new trim, new baseboard, new carpet, and painted it. Amazing what paint does. This is beautiful. Large washer and dryer. This works for me. Oh, oh come on. Not the way to put in a laundry tub. This was not in the report. OK, we have a beautiful laundry tub. Well, what do I see here? The drain is straight up with no trap that leads into what? It's a clay pipe that's in the floor. I think I can smell it, the methane gas coming out of the floor. That's gonna be a pain in the butt, and this is minor. When you start adding things together, methane gas exhausting out of cat gas, bringing into the furnace, which should have been ducted outside for fresh air. I don't know. That doesn't sound like a good equation to me. It's just hilarious to see this, to actually have a little sump box that everything runs into to go into the drain. Now I'm really terrified with all the plumbing in here. Did they punch new drains in the floor? And if they did some of the plumbing wrong in the house, is there plumbing wrong in the floor? That oil tank, they should have removed. That was in the report. Every time I go into a house that has an oil tank, I seem to be the lucky culprit that gets to remove it. Look at this. Look at the buildup across the bottom here. It is starting to leach out right there. And that's something. That's why it smells so strong. Well, why take it out if you don't have to? Nobody wants to be responsible for it. The smells. Is that dangerous? <sighs> that's oil. Holmes. Looks good, eh? Look around. It looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, looks are deceiving. I see cracking. Uh, there's a lot of cracking, a lot of cracking, which might explain that the drywallers were not good and the painter was fabulous. <laughs> if we look on this side, we can see the open cavity. That's a two by four studded wall here that is totally open and against oh, yeah. fire code for a gas stove. Yeah, because you have a grease fire, it is going to reach This is a capstone, so this may be the lighter natural stone that they made. And you know what? We may just end up ripping the whole freaking thing down. Once these are open, yeah. we'll have a lot more. But I don't want to come back here until you've had everyone in. No worries. Yep. OK, give me a day. OK? You're going to need a couple days, pal. At least two. OK. Open house surgery, that's what it is. You see that? <laughs> ABS right to the top. Yeah. Not proper drain. No. One and guys and girls. This is your home for the next three weeks. It's a very, very nice house. So right off the bat, let's protect everything. I want plastic on the furniture. Okay, so no dust gets anywhere. I just want a path right here. Okay. Whoa. 
Mike wants to make sure that these are the correct pot lights. He wants to make sure there's enough insulation in here. He wants to check out structure. He wants to check out everything. We can't do it. There's no attic here. This is a vaulted ceiling. So the only way we have is these little access holes here. So we're gonna open up and see. Vapor barrier and insulation. Shocking. Do I want to jump up and down that somebody finally did their job properly? That uh, they, you know, they put vapor barrier and insulation? No. This is the way you have to do it. I'm not that excited. What I'm actually more interested in is to see what they did wrong. Oh, we have the right pot lights. That is a great sign. Bravo, gentlemen. They have proper insulation. To me so far, it looks like it's been done properly, but... But we still have to find out why the ceiling is cracking. MJ, do me a favor, take down the plate, take down the wood, take down the light. Frank's gonna be here soon, so he has to check the electrical as well, okay? Really, Carl? Yeah. Wanna Carl. give me a hand? Well, right off the bat, I see some nasty electrical. All these right here, that's supposed to be within the box. That's not supposed to be out of the box. Okay, Frank, are you there, bud? Just want to show. You. Hey, man, look at this. I just wanted to show you this. Take a look at what they've done with these pot lights above. Can you hear me? No. You see the fraying that's already happening on that yeah. cable? Yeah. Okay, that's from this cable rubbing against the, the the metal, which is sharp. Right. So this is just a matter of time. It's going to short out against the metal. This is grounded through this cable, which is going to cause a dead short. Well, look at the three lines just hanging there in the middle of nowhere, just all bundled up right here. Disgusting. It's called an open-air connection. You look nervous all of a sudden. Yeah, because if I find it like that, where else am I going to have problems? Absolutely. OK, we'll start off like you said. We'll, we'll turn off the power here and get rid of this. Thank you. We're gonna drop this ceiling right here. I want stuff on the floor, and I want the couches protected and that TV protected. Come on in here. Okay, this is it. Do you smell that? Sorry, it's the kitty litter. Yeah, I, thought, I smell you know. <laughs> it's, not, it's not gas, it's a different kind of gas. This is our intake. This <laughs> a little short, maybe? No fresh air? It's a lot short. Um, it's. Mechanical room, yeah. also a laundry room. This needs to be vented outside. Look at this, where the drain actually comes out. They've actually put it into a pump, and they pumped it about, what, six inches six. to a foot? Yeah. They pumped it over to a foot. Do you need that? I mean, could you just put a line right through? Yeah. Just, we'll disconnect the weird. pump. OK. Um, we'll tee it all in, and we'll just bring a line to here. Thank you very much. You did that whole thing already? Holy, oh, that was fast. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like lightning, man. That's for you. Thank you. Get your head. Look at the water. I was sitting on that. <laughs> that was uh, held together pretty well. You know what I don't see? It's the drain. That's right. We're gonna have to figure out where this is. Oh, here's a copper pipe. While the water was sitting there, doesn't necessarily mean that's exactly where it's coming through. It's just no brainer why there's a leak down below. The water has a clear ability to penetrate in between the ABS and the grout. Uh, grout is not uh, waterproof, tiles are not waterproof, so I don't believe a licensed plumber would do such thing, to be honest, because this is a fundamental error. Uh, and anybody that has some, some knowledge of plumbing, uh, even an apprentice, uh, would not take it to, the, to such an extreme in terms of, you know, making a mess out of it. Once the tank is cut and removed, all the piping, the tank, the copper, everything goes to the scrapyard. Everybody says there's no oil in the tank, and there's always oil in the tanks. Hey, Stu, how are you doing? The gauge on the top of the tank showed quarter full. It was actually half full. It was half full. 573 liters we took out of here in oil and sludge. 573 liters. Not only sludge. that, when we start agitating the tank, cutting it up to get yep. out, 
two holes appeared in the bottom. Well, how come we don't see staining here? Well, the rust kind of held it together, so it was ready, pitted, and ready to go. If, within a year, that would have drained out in here. We're lucky we took it out at this point. So we have a leak, boys? Do we have a leak in more than one spot? OK, can we shut that water off? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> OK. Thanks, guys. Adam, you still holding? Three cats in the house, and we have like a mouse hotel up here. City cats, I'm telling you, lazy. Mr. Bennett. Yes, sir. What I'm thinking is, how do we keep this bulkness? I like that the lights are centered yep. in, in this. Now, if we move it all back, so it may actually be right to the back of this cabinet, right? Yep. Are you OK with taking out some stones and tying it all back Worst in? case scenario, the answer is yes. Then we're going to put in a big, beautiful stainless steel hood. I've never seen a fireplace in a range built like this in my life. And can I fix it? Absolutely. I know we can fix it. I know we can bring it back to what they're going to love without changing the whole look of it. I'm uh, very sorry that we made a mess of your house. Uh, it it kind of looked like a doctor's office, to be honest with you, <laughs> or a contamination room, because it was just plastic everywhere. And it was plastic rooms trying to protect all your furniture. The idea was to do an inspection to see whether or not everything was up to code. We did check. There is no permits. There was a handful of contractors in here that cared, did it right. Without a permit, they can easily cut corners. But we don't know unless we do the investigation. Now, I've been haunting myself in my sleep on how I'm going to fix this issue. Uh, once Damon had pulled down the plate, we can easily see. Let me just show you this. We can easily see the way they did the structure. So to come over and just take a quick look. See how there's the two by fours opening is in here? Mm. There's exhaust fans in the duct lines that didn't work. And these electrical connections were just like this up inside, which mm. is totally unacceptable. So they had fans, and there were, there are is booster fans in the duct system, but they didn't work. So I'm, I'm gonna come up with something here to, to fix this. I still wanna keep this look because it really works for me. It is, it's something that uh, I can tell that's why you bought the yeah. house. Yeah. Come on downstairs. So we did open up underneath the bathroom. Now we see we definitely had leaks here. Now this indicates that the leaks here are at the front of the shower stall exactly where I said. We also have leaks at the drain. So it's two locations. So we have to fix the bottom of your shower stall. We have to fix the drain in it. Now there's enough work just doing that to warrant it. That's a holy crap factor. You yeah. know, it's just, do we pull the glass? Do we actually take it all down? But the, again, we'll do more work. We have to solve it. Let's take a look downstairs, OK? okay. I have a question. Did you install that sink? No. OK. So this, the home inspector has definitely missed things that are very clear. It is his job to look under all sinks, make sure the drains are fine. Um, there's a lot of things that we, we definitely have to fix. So we're going to pick and choose the, the, the hard things to fix and solve the problems for you. And then once again, I'm going to give you a list of the little things uh, that you can do on your own. We're still investigating. We've been, uh, you know, we talked last night a little bit over dinner. We're going, she's like, I wonder what he's going to find tomorrow. You know, why are there holes in the ceiling? What's, what do they found there? We're just, we're dick going, crap, now what? So relax. It's going to be a couple weeks of hell. No worries. Thanks. I'm sorry. Now, if it gets okay. too much, you know, maybe you can find a hotel or something. <laughs> Put your stuff down when you get up here. Uh, I want furniture moved. I want to know why these are cracking, Carl. I want to tackle all the drywall issues today. OK, we know there's no backing on a lot of it. I want you to cut open holes, find out what's going on. Things we're going to be tackling today. I'm going to be tackling drywall. I started to see cracking. I started worrying about that. I thought it was structure. It's not structure. It's bad drywall. Hey, dude, what's going on? There's yeah. no, uh, there's no back. Just put tape on it. No, and there's nothing even backing it up on the butt joints. OK, let me think here. Is there another way I can solve this without taking everything down? I mean, I used wood screws, too. Huh? For what? Their drywall screws are wood screws instead of sheet metal. Did they? Yeah. You know, we we're just trying to do some nice things by doing a couple of patches, fixing some cracks in their ceiling. And it's the crap we uncover every single time. For proper installation, the section where two sheets of drywall meet should have a joist behind it for support. In this case, they used a resilient channel, which is a leveling system, but it was installed wrong. None of the joints are supported, which allowed the drywall to flex and crack at the seams. 
So that's why everything's cracking. Basic drywalling. Damon, how's it going, Martin? <laughs> what is that? Actually, that's a sewer line. And, and it's, it's clogged. And it's clogged. I get uh, water setting there and... Uh, You're kidding me. Yeah. Everything's cracking above and on the walls. Like, who would do that? That's, that's, it's frustrating. Take it down. Take this all down. This, the second floor drain is completely gone. It's broken. This uh, one here? Yeah, it's filled with sand, so it's got absolutely no drainage. I would classify that as investigative procedure to open this up, you know, find out exactly what's broken and the extent of it. Okay, so we're breaking up the floor. <laughs> That's not what I was expecting. Drywall down. Come on, come on, come on. This, shower, this whole shower was done improperly. This is good. This is how you want your drywall to be. Crumbly and damp. And I see mold. I've got soaking wet drywall. I mean, at least they used a membrane. The membrane was able to hold the water out of damaging more downstairs. Hello, Carl? Yes, I need you upstairs pronto. Thank you. It wasn't connected. Hey, good news, man. There's no signs of leaking anywhere but below this. So I'm thinking it was coming from the sill here, the sill there, and from the shower pan. What it was doing, the pan was holding so much water because they did waterproof the pan. As soon as it got past the tile, the rubber membrane was actually doing its job, holding the water in, and was wicking up the drywall. Baby, you got it. Look at the mold on that. You see? Turn around. All right. Ah. Now look at the water under there. Look at how soaked that is. That is just saturated. Here. You know, with a proper drain. You know how they do it, right? They have a yeah. clamp on the bottom. What happens is your flange goes right over top of this membrane so that it's watertight. Look at this. They actually cut a hole around for the pipe and left it like that. In the big scheme of things, is that range a big deal to me anymore? I don't think so. That's a such small potatoes at this point. I mean, after what I'm dealing with in the basement, the plumbing leak in the, the plumbing leak in the shower, for Christ's sakes, I forgot. We have a plumbing leak in the damn shower as well. So we're gonna take care of all this. I'm popping ceilings everywhere. It looked like a beautiful house when we came in, didn't it? Take a look again. You think that drain was working? <laughs> well, I haven't had one freaking good news on this job yet. Right, let's get this jacked open, okay? useless rubber membrane. Okay, Kate, tack that off from real quick. I need to steal Carlito. We got a million other jobs here. No, it's one of those matrix moments. Your arms should be like almost in slow motion. They're going so fast. Okay, I need Frank, I need Gary. And a prayer. I've got problems everywhere in this whole house. 
I still have not touched the range. I have not touched the chimney. I have to get to that at this point. I mean, my focus has been so pulled away in every direction, ceiling, basement, bathroom. I mean, I'm everywhere in this house. Got to regain focus, get back to why we're here. I just thought I'd start tackling this. I have my mason coming in a couple of days. I want to actually get this back. I want to get it back to the wall that I talked about. I want to fix any framing that I need to fix, pull all the lines. Ah! Now that is why we protect the countertop. Your mortar, when you're doing stone like this, should never just pop off the wall. What you're supposed to do is actually fill your mesh. Me the mesh was proper. What they did is they filled the mesh with cement, let it dry, and then they started putting their stone over top of it. So what's gonna happen is these pieces here, this is what was on the back of the stone. It didn't stick. I was able to pull it off with my hand, which should never happen. The cement on the back of the stone should be bonding to the fresh cement that's in the mesh. Down. Yeah. All right. Did you? Easier than we expected. Any use of saving it? Uh, this maybe. We'll have to see what you uh, what we how do you here. Change it. Uh, just to let you guys know what I'm doing, I'm gonna actually cut the tile there, get a marble threshold straight up here, so that you guys have something to go to here. Marble threshold down here and to there. I'm gonna leave that side tile though. All right. You good? Yep. All right. Slowly working our way down. This one's coming too. Yeah. Just hold it. Okay, I got these. Go ahead, grab what you have. Once we took out one piece, this whole thing started coming down. The only thing holding it together was the cement between each stone. This whole wall is floating, basically. What's holding it in? They, I think they use these as brick ties. This is not going to do it. I can basically pull some of these screws out with my fingers. What happens when this wants to give? These aren't gonna hold anything. Inspector should have caught this, absolutely. He came in here, all he had to do was look up. One simple step, reach in, look up. Wow, this is done improperly. That's, you like, know what? This thing you is know just sitting funny? there. No, it's floating. It's floating. It's oh hanging. Oh my God. I've got nothing to say. I've seen it all. Counter's fine. So there's nothing wrong with the countertop at all. At this point, I just have an octopus here. Uh, I have electrical everywhere. I don't even know what's what. Uh, I have junction points. I have some booster fans in here. Shouldn't be done that way. And we have open hanging junctions. What we're doing is we're losing a bit of a wall here and a bit of an overhang. Uh, I think what I do in the end, I think they're going to absolutely love it and it will be safe. Very good. You're on a cement board. I'm really happy about that. Okay, the most important thing right now is getting that pan in the curb in, okay? So All get right. your cement board up here, cement board back there. All right. Yeah. Well, with the cement board in place, proper drain, and a watertight membrane sealing the shower stall, we're ready to tile. You're gonna take the stairs up. We have a floor guy coming in today to uh, get the stairs done for us. He's gonna match up to that one, so the faster you get that off, probably the better. Okay, my friend, you are almost an hour late. Okay, I got here like 20 minutes ago. Did you really? Yes. How could you be tired if you went to bed early? <laughs> Let's get this meshed, because uh, I gotta get Carl taping it, okay? So maybe I'll get you actually doing some fun stuff before you do some other stuff. What's other stuff? We'll see. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm good, yourself? Good. What are you saying about the stone? 
I've got the stones to match. I hope they match. They might be a little bit different shape. Okay. So we're gonna mix them with the old ones. Sure. So we don't see other. We were able to salvage almost every single one of them. Okay. Do you have mesh? Did you bring mesh? Mesh is over there. Oh, great. We started unloading before you guys came out. <laughs> is that right? Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna stick on the mesh. Make sure the honey uh, cones are up. So you get a nice bond. There's a ton of mudding to do today. Uh, we got, well, pretty much the entire ceiling to hit. Uh, two coats of Durabond at least because there's the imperfections and all the waves in the ceiling. It's pretty ridiculous. So we're gonna fix all that and try and make it look nice. Nice mortar on it, nice thick coat, and then when you put the stone on, you always squeeze it into place so it sticks, hold it, let go, and that's it. Oh my god! Beautiful, how you doing? Good. Nice doing? job, guys. Thanks. That looks great. Appreciate it. Now you had to incorporate both stones? Oh yeah. Mixing it all up. The old one, Man. the brand new one. It's looking good though. That looks right? great. But, yeah. so I have a range coming in, a range hood coming yeah. in right here. Now this is gonna affect a little bit, but not too much, right? It's natural stone, what are we supposed to do? You have to let it, you know, the different thicknesses reveal itself, right? Exactly. So what are you thinking, Monday? Monday, Monday finish? Monday for us, sure, 100%. Monday finish, and that's joints done, everything? Joints done, stones done, cleanups done. We may just end up ripping the whole freaking thing down. When you do a house flip, it's like you paint. You don't, it's a crap shoot. What is this? You know, how to sight out of mine? It's not a problem if you don't see it. I see it. I got the range hood. It's actually going to be very nice. It's nice and sleek. I like it right there. Can you see that? Is that good? Yep. OK, go. Through here. We're gonna get it. I'm still gonna be done in two days. Um, pressure's on a little bit. Anything in the attic's gotta be insulated. It's, as long as it's insulated, you can use flex in the attic, but it's gotta be uh, rigid pipe from here to the attic. We would not be able to do this without the people that work with me. I rely heavily on everyone who's working here. They're very hard workers. Just get this place done, cleaned, ready for homework to come in. Us revealing two days, okay? Got it? on his way. Last day, I have Craig painting. I've got uh, Steve Graves up on the roof putting some vents in for me. He's got to tie into the range for me, put a six inch vent up there, make sure it's nice and sealed. My guy's cleaning, doing some last minute touch ups with plaster, which should have been done yesterday, but they were here very late, so I'm gonna let them go on this. Uh, we're getting there. Mike should be here soon. I think he's gonna love it. We reused the door that uh, was existing um, after the guys removed it. What we basically just did was remeasure for the two side lights. Very nice. You guys almost done? 
Uh, yeah, just got to put the sweep on and... Last trade today. Right. I love it. I'm ready to give it back. I like the color. Hey, Mike. How you doing? I'd like to say I picked that color, but the homeowner did. I'm liking it. It looks pretty good. I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy the way the range turned out, the shower, everything. Let's get him and walk him through it. I think I okay. can't wait to see it. Great. Good job, buddy. Thank you, my friend. Oh, hello. 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 Dee Dee. How are you? I'm good. Hi, Rick. How are you? Nice how to you see doing, you. Man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. So, yeah. Rick, Mike, are you ready to take your home back? Yes. Let's go. Yeah. You were pumped. Let's go. After you. So now we brought in the towel, guys. So you have all the proper watertight systems underneath. Proper wow. sills. Oh, nice. That's beautiful. And so it was leaking from the front. It was leaking from the drain. It was leaking from the side. And all the excussion plates were not sealed. So we did all that. Yep, they're all sealed up. We found more when we opened this up, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Well, we knew where it was kidding. leaking the most was this corner right here, right against the wall. It was getting right in through the grout lines, soaking your wood, uh, and soaking the drywall, creating mold. Wow. No leaks. Beautiful. Let's go downstairs. Wow. Wow. That's beautiful. Look at that. Oh, my God. Now, this actually makes the kitchen look bigger. Holy crap. Look at that, eh? I, I was worried about the kitchen. And, um, uh, you know, because we've got this beautiful stonework here, and I thought, well, what's that going to end up like? I was wow. just going to say, you added more counter space. No, the, by taking <laughs> down the walls, we added more counter space. <laughs> this was all removed. So now the electrical's been repaired. We have a proper exhaust that's insulated directly through the attic, and it's, it's usable. Wow. I was going to say that it works. It works. Yeah, 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 yeah. It works. And the good thing is, is that it did not, they did not damage the countertop. Yeah. Not to mention, my guys didn't damage it, taking it down and putting it back up again. Mm -hmm. So we got Beautiful. lucky. Absolutely gorgeous. Not bad, eh? They did a lot of things right in the your initial renovation. The drywall was not done properly. I wanted to repair the cracks for you. Couldn't repair the cracks without taking it all down. Wow. Perfection. Beautiful. Yeah. Perfection. It looks spectacular. I guess you know you have wood stairs. Oh, wood. Oh, <laughs> Matches the other side. Oh, for God's sakes. We repaired all the drywall uh, in, in that wonderful living room yeah. area and made sure it was mold resistant underneath yeah. the shower. We brought in electricians, did everything to code, pulled the permits. I brought in Martin. He scoped the drains. We found that there was two collapsed pipes in the floor, dug it up, put in new drains, and replaced the laundry sink. We brought in the oil tank, guys. You're so lucky. It had two holes in the bottom of it, and what happened is the rust and the sludge actually clogged it. You could have had uh, oil in your no. basement. There's two holes from it sitting there for that long. We brought in our wonderful HVAC guys that ran a fresh air line outside. Not bad, eh? No. That's yeah. a lot of work. Well, and they did it right. But now you can sit back and relax. Wow, what a relief. What's the matter? <laughs> you happy? Oh, yeah. So now it's good then. I'd buy this house all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank Mike and all your crew. You guys have been just spectacular. So we had some shirts made up that had the Homes Inspection logo on it. We put the name on it, and we put Make It Right on the back. That is cool. Thank, thank you so you. much, guys. Thank you. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. group hug, get in here. Come on. Hey. Group hug. Hey. Come on. Two, three.